Alrighty, hello students. So here we are on Tinkercad.com. We're going to start learning how to 3D model using this website. So you don't need any fancy computers or anything. And uh, if you have a computer mouse, you might not even need to plug that in because Tinkercad is pretty uh, user friendly. Um, so the link I sent you, make sure you sign up for the class and um, you'll see some things that uh, we're going to go through here in this video lesson. Um, so once you've joined our class, you can go back to Tinkercad and click sign in or uh, make sure you are signed in to the computer on, on Tinkercad. And uh, you'll either sign in with Google or students join your class depending on what part you are if you didn't do the sign up yet. Um, there's I have given you a code for your specific class, so make sure you sign in with that. Um, I'm signing into my teacher end, and you should see the same stuff at the top, like the learn button, and that's where we're going to start. So we're going to click on learn, and we're going to click on projects. So the projects uh, option gets you into these projects and we're going to start with let's learn Tinkercad. So Tinkercad is a software used to create 3D models that you can actually 3D print. And there's five lessons and let's do the lesson one. So in this video I'm going to go through all five lessons for you to work through with me and watch me do it and you do it at the same time. Um, if you are very confident in being able to do it on your own, go for it. Um, just start with getting started like I'm doing right now. Let the interface and all that load up. There is a lot of reading on the left side. This is all your directions right here. So that's why I'm making a video lesson so I can walk you through these directions and you can follow along with me on screen. So design is uh, the art of discovering all the things that haven't yet been made. Tinkercad is an amazingly powerful, easy to use tool for creating digital designs that are ready to be 3D printed into super cool physical objects. And I'm just going to click next. So welcome to Tinkercad. On your first lesson, you will be guided step by step through how to use the works plane, Tinkercad's menus and interface, camera controls and the basics of moving objects. It's really important that you learn this stuff, otherwise you will not be successful with Tinkercad. Clicking next. All right, so now we're going to um, arrive at the Tinkercad work plane, which it looks like a blank sheet of graph paper. That's this blue area right here. This is where you create your designs. Now it says, I'll find the Tinkercad logo. That's this guy right here. It's the logo with the menu bar, which is things across the top of the screen. The buttons across the menu bar are actions that can prove that can perform within Tinkercad. To the left of the work plane under the Tinkercad logo are the view cube. So this is the view cube. If you click top, you actually move that 3D space around. There's a home button that will reset it. And you have some other options fit the view. In the right of the work plane is the shapes menu. You can scroll through the shapes. Your basic shapes, there's many other shapes. All right, now let's take a detailed look at the work plane next. The work place is the surface upon which things you create will appear. The work plane looks like a piece of graph paper. It's broken into one centimeter major grid lines and one millimeter minor grid lines at thin blue lines. In the lower right hand corner, the edit grid button allows you to change the units of your design. So if you look in this area, you can change your units. If I click edit grid. I can change its width and length. I can work in inches or millimeters. I update the grid. And that'll do that. So um, let's leave it on the one millimeter. Continue. Your view cube is called the uh, camera so in Tinkercad we call in, in engineer we call it the view cube or the uh, yeah view cube 
and uh, Tinkercad calls it the camera. Okay, so you can actually you can grab it. So if you hold down on your mouse um, mouse pad or mouse clicker, you can move it around. Click at home, resets it. Uh, what are hints? So let's look at these orange shapes in the middle of the work plane. Those are called hints. Hints are outlines of shapes or work planes to guide you through the lesson. So let's look at this shapes menu. By the way, we're on step seven of 20 in this lesson. The hint wants you to grab a cube and place it in the center of the work plane. To do that, you'll need to explore the shapes menu. So find the basic shapes menu. That's where we are in right in here. If you are not in that, make sure you click here. And it says drag a box to the work plane and place it within the hint. So I'm going to click on, I'm going to click on, I guess this box. I'm going to click on box and drag it into there. Okay, and then click next. Rotate around your shape and check to see if it's completely within the hint. If you find that your block is not perfectly shaped like the image below, um, you can use two fingers to zoom in and out. Let's see. Yes, I'm in. Yeah. Okay. Still not sure you got it right. Let's take a closer look by zooming. So double check your box placement within the hint. Uh, by rotating around, and we already did that. We want it to be solid, so click on solid. Next. If you need to zoom in on your project, you can use your mouse scroll wheel or your touchpad. So if you have a mouse, use your wheel. If you have a touchpad, um, use two fingers. I think this, this should also work. Yep, there's a plus button and a minus button. You can just tap on that. Next. Uh, controlling the camera with your mouse. Okay, so you can move your mouse po pointer over the work plane and then click and hold on your right mouse button. Um, I don't have a mouse hooked up, so how would I do it without a mouse? If I hold down shift and click, nope, that's not working. Okay, so if I hold down, so if you don't have a mouse, hold down the control button. The control button, I'm honestly not sure um, if that's going to be in the same spot on everyone's computers, but the control button is usually in the bottom left. So if you hold down control and you click and hold on your mouse pad, you can move the work plane around like that as well. It also might just be easier to click home and click on the sides of the view cube or the camera as they call it to see um, what you're doing. Next. Using the shape window. When an object is selected, you will see the shape window. So if I click on the object, I see the shape window. And it gives you control over some of its properties. Okay, so you can um, click on the solid button right here. You can change its color. You can create custom colors, apparently. That's a neat feature. By the way, I've used Tinkercad in the past, but not extensively like I'm going to be using it with you guys. So a lot of this stuff I'm learning with you as well. Okay, uh, let's see. Continue. Working with shapes in 3D space. We're now going to explore working with objects in 3D space, which means not just moving them on the work plane, but also moving them away and from and even underneath the work plane. This can be tricky at first, so let's learn some tools to help us think in 3D. For the rest of the lesson, you'll need a second object so we can explore these tools. We're going to drag a sphere to the work plane. So find the sphere, grab it, put it in that circle. Okay, it's not entirely in that circle, so I'm going to move it so it fits right in there. And then continue. Uh, this is a great image right here. I'm going to open this up. So if you click on the images, it'll show you in a larger view what they're trying to explain so here um, so our first tool is a 3d modeler salute 
which will help you think in 3D. So make, make your hand like the hand in the picture, and we're going to give each finger a letter. So Z, Y, X. Okay? So your middle finger will be X axis, which travels from left to right, defining the bottom edge of the work plane. Your index finger will be Y axis, which extends from the bottom of the screen to the top defining the left edge of the work plane and your thumb is the Z axis which is the invisible edge that is perpendicular to the work plane. These axes, these axes meet at the origin, the corner of the grid with the word work plane. I wish I would show you an image of that right here. In 3D modeling there are many ways to move an object. The first type of moving is translation. Translation is changing an object's position without rotating the object or changing its size. Um, so now it wants us to try this. So put your hand in front of you, just like this, your left hand. And that's uh, that's the 3D workspace. So Z is up and down, C or Y is um, away from you and towards you, and X is left and right. Next. All right, so it's asking us to translate objects along the Z axis. Okay, so let's remember, what is Z? Z is up and down. So let's zoom in, click on the object. And we're going to, there should be like a little, this little arrow right here. Yeah, if I click that, let's move it along the z-axis. Hooray. What's this say? So you'll also notice the sphere leaves a shadow on the work plane. Oh, I like that. When you drag it up, the distance between the shadow and the sphere increases, and a number measurement appears to the right of the sphere. This number and the corresponding lines indicate the distance between the object and the work plane. Very interesting. Uh, da, da, da. So it says use a vertical drag handle to move the sphere to 11 millimeters off the work plane. We already did that. Let's try again. If I click on that, click and drag, see the 11 right there? Oh, I can click on it. If I type 15, what happens? Oh, it goes up. Oh, look at that. That's really cool. All right, next. Translating objects along the X, Y. All right. Uh, to move an object along the X and Y, simply click and drag the object. As you do this, you will see two numbers appear to the right of these objects. These numbers represent the distance. Drag the sphere 30 millimeters so that it sits on top of the cube. I guess click and drag and go left. Oh, look at that. Oh, okay, so I have a negative 30 right here, which means it went um, negative 30 millimeters to the left. That's really neat. Next. We're almost done with this lesson, by the way. The whole property. Now, we're going to introduce two Boolean operations. Addition and subtraction. A Boolean operation is how you can combine two objects into a new shape. Boolean addition adds one shape to another. So if the box and sphere were combined, you'd have a single shape. That was a box with a hemisphere protrusion on top. With Boolean subtraction, you can turn one shape into a negative space and use it to remove material from another. In this case, you'd be left with a box that has a hemisphere hole on top. Let's try it. So we're gonna, so while the sphere is selected, so we're gonna click on that and click hole from within the inspector. Where is the inspector? Is that this? Hole. So I click hole. Okay, and then next. Was that it? Uh, no, I guess not. So in order to use the sphere to cut into the box, we need to make sure that the two objects are selected. 
To select both objects, we're going to use the band selection tool. A band is a box we draw a round shape so we wish to select. So click on an empty space, not the object, and to the left of the object above the shape, so like right here. And then click and drag while holding the mouse button down across to the right to select both of those objects. I think I did it. And then, yep, all right, let go and continue next. By using the group function, we can use a, any combination of Boolean addition and subtraction to turn objects into one complex shape. This means any combination of solids and holds can be made and used to make any shape imaginable. Try that now. So both objects selected, we did that. And now we're going to click on this button. We can press Control G on our keyboards or just click it. And wow, look at that. It cut the, the sphere out of the box. Huh. So Congratulations! Great job! You made it through your first Tinkercad lesson. We've covered a lot in this lesson. Um, what I would like you to try to uh, do next to earn credit for this lesson is do something very similar. So bring in a cylinder, bring in a sphere, okay? And what you're going to do, how do I, is there a way to okay oh, okay that, look at that that's a good button we're going to take the sphere and we're going to cut oops we're going to cut a hole into the sphere so click on sphere make it a hole click and drag across both of those and group it so that looks like something like that i don't really care what it looks like i just want to see that you know how to cut out spherical holes out of objects okay and then um, I should be able to see that you've completed this lesson within the class but just in case um, you'll need to screenshot it and submit that um, again, if you have any questions or need help with anything, I'm available daily on Google Hangouts or you can email me and ask me questions or ask questions in your Google Classroom assignments.